Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very accomplished professional for a second time back with us from USA, Mr. John Baldoni. John, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Ash. It's, uh, I enjoyed our first show, and thank you for inviting me back for a second time. Thank so. you. Uh, John is an author of a book titled Grace Under Pressure, and you can see it, see his book just behind him. He's a master corporate executive coach. He's an author of 16 books, sought-after communications consultant, and he has been recognized by the International Federation of Learning and Development as a world-class mentor. So we spoke about a lot of the things that Bob John has done earlier in the, in the earlier segment. Today, we're going to speak only about his new book, Race Under Pressure. So, John, first question for you. Can you give our listeners a brief overview of your book, Grace Under Pressure, and what inspired you to write it? Yes, thank you. Um, grace Under Pressure is my third book on the topic of grace. And I believe in grace as a, uh, a healing power for us, if you will. It is a catalyst for the greater good. Mm. And in my first book on the topic of grace, uh, Grace, a Leader's Guide for a Better Us, I defined what it meant. I talked about generosity, respect, compassion. Uh, and I did a little book in between during the time of COVID, Grace Notes, Leading in an Upside Down World, which were... Um, and a sense poetic reflections about what leaders were thinking about and, uh, you know, uh, grief, pain, resilience, um, coping, but mm. also building anew, you know, because we all went through this pandemic and it was turned everything upside down. Mm. Grace Under Pressure, Leading Through Changing Crisis is my third book. And I focus on grace again as the connector, but how leaders, quote, keep it together when times are stressful. Mm -hmm. So there's three things, Ash, that leaders do. One, take care of their people. Mm -hmm. Two, they take care of themselves. And three, build for the future, prepare for the future. But the twist is you have to do it with a sense of grace. So what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Courage, commitment, compassion, mm -hmm. making people feel welcome, uh, embracing new and different uh, ideas, uh, bringing people to together. And also, I think very much so building a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So before I ask you my next question, I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out John Baldoni's Grace Trilogy, uh, the first two books and his book, Grace Under Pressure. I'll go and check out all the three books myself. So, John, my next question, in today's fast-paced and often high-pressure world, why do you think grace is such an important quality? Because it's the exact opposite. It's counterintuitive. Well, it's it's counterintuitive to the way management is run. Now, management, as you well know, because you're an accomplished executive and run a number of organizations, is all about administrative, getting things, uh, helping the trains run on time, which is absolutely critical to every organization. And we all know that because when we work for organizations which are poorly managed, nothing gets done. So grace, though, is the connector. It, grace is about, as I said earlier, this uh, catalyst for the greater good. So it's about looking beyond. It's about looking at individuals as individuals, as contributors, and how together I as a leader or um, a colleague can make things better in the office and the workplace, but also in my community. Mm -hmm. So grace also is that level or that and we take it down a level in, in stressful times. And even when we're not in a crisis, we're always going through periods of change. Okay. And as you well know, change is disruptive. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the leader to point the way, but do it in a way that brings people along, makes it safe for them, makes them able to grasp the bigger picture and then embrace it as they go forward. Mm -hmm. so. Fascinating. Thank you. You also talk about six key elements of grace in your book. Can you, for my viewers and listeners, talk about these six elements and how they contribute to effective leadership? Well, my memory is a bit shot from time to time. So I will say I say some of the key ones okay. are generosity. 
that ability of sharing and looking mm -hmm. at the whole, dealing with this, uh, looking at things in the spirit of abundance rather than hoarding. Respect mm -hmm. for others, which is, we've heard that a thousand times, but from a management standpoint, it's looking at my employees and giving them the benefit of the doubt until mm -hmm. they prove otherwise. Looking mm -hmm. and, and respecting the dignity of work because mm -hmm. we come to work to do, I think most people come to work to do a good job. Mm -hmm. And so let's respect them for what they are. Um, it's about, and, and here's the critical thing. We talk a lot about empathy. Mm -hmm. Well, empathy is that ability to feel the pain of another, but it's also the ability to feel the joy of another one and mm -hmm. to celebrate. But leaders have to take it a step further, Ash, as you would know. And that's the expression of empathy, which is compassion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And compassion is about feeling what's going on, but helping to make a positive difference. Mm -hmm. And then the third, I think for the final thing would be creating a sense of community. I think we're all looking for to belong. Mm -hmm. Well, we all want to contribute to something greater than ourselves. I know your whole career now is focused on giving back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, we like that feeling. So how can we do that in a workplace? Well, we create a workplace, a, a term that we use is psychological safety, where people mm -hmm. feel they belong. They can voice their opinions. That doesn't mean everybody needs to agree to, with one another, nor should they all mm -hmm. agree with one another. Mm -hmm. But it means that they feel that I can voice my opinion. And at the same time, I can be a better colleague. That really is um, a sense of community. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and community is essential, I think, to the workplace because it makes for people want to belong. They want to go to work mm -hmm. to see their colleagues. Maybe some are friends, but they want to belong and do good work. Mm -hmm. so. Fascinating. Uh, you know, when I was reading some reviews of your books, you spoke about empathy as one of the elements. There's another one called, which was humility. My question is, how can leaders develop a greater sense of humility and empathy? The, the, that's a good question. I used to joke that the, the humility is one thing they don't teach in business school. <laughs> so, right. But it's so important, though, and because humility is really an acknowledgement that I don't have all the answers. Correct. And you well know, I know in your long career, how many bosses did you encounter who didn't know the answer but tried to fake it? How Correct. much better to say, hey, um, you know, teach me something, mm -hmm. uh, share. With. And today, you know, we call it maybe reverse mentoring, where mm -hmm. younger people who are uh, as you, we were just talking earlier, uh, our um, young people are so technologically more adept and savvy mm -hmm. than you are, at least than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, me too. And yeah. they can, yeah, they can teach us so much. But that requires an ability to put down my guard and be open to learning. And mm -hmm. I think humility is, is not a sign of weakness, Ash. It's a sign of strength mm -hmm. because if you're in a leadership position, you're saying, "Hey, I need help." And that, and then they say, well, if the boss needs help, what about if I need help? Well, mm -hmm. then you create this, again, community where mm -hmm. people feel that they can contribute and mm -hmm. contribute to uh, the greater good by mm -hmm. all working together. Mm -hmm. so. Well said, well said. There's also a talk in your book about adaptability in grace. Uh, my question is how, once again, how can leaders cultivate the skill of adaptability because in some situations that I have seen some not so good bosses think adaptability is equivalent to weakness again yeah you know um the, the subtitle of the book is leading through change and crisis well in change and in crisis things are are fall, maybe falling apart in times of crisis but mm -hmm. everything's always changing so what we knew as the standard before isn't going to be there again and we all had this great lesson in adaptability when we went with the pandemic i mean who would have thought you could put brakes on the on the global economy mm -hmm. send everybody home but it still worked and, you know, when I give a keynote today, um, I always say, uh, invite people to stand up and give them and, and cheer. And I, why do I do that? It's because I said, give yourself on the pat on the a pat on the back because you're still here. You, mm -hmm. you succeeded. You you face the greatest adversity um, <clears throat> economically in your lifetime. Right. And you, you generally thrived. And, right. and that's a good feeling. So mm -hmm. adaptability is critical. Part of that, I think, Ash, comes from 
dealing with ambiguity. Mm. You know, we none of us know all the answers, nor will we. Um, and so things are always in flux. Um, and so dealing with this sense of ambiguity, uncertainty, leaders have to make it safe that, hey, we don't have all the answers, but here's what we're going to do. Mm. So that's that would be what how I would define that, Ash. Well said. Oh. Well said. Uh, the other, other uh, element is gratitude. But my question is, how can leaders create a culture of gratitude in their organizations? Well, the simple thing is, it's a, it's a practice, but it's not a practice, but it's not uncommon now for senior leaders to write thank you notes to key people in their organization, or some mm. executives do it to uh, uh, hundreds of people in their organization. Mm. <clears throat> what it is, is Attitude is, excuse me, gratitude is an attitude. Mm -hmm. It is a, a mindset that says, that said, I am appreciative of the work you are doing. And as you know, um, Ash, since you were a senior executive for so many years, when someone of, of your stature would recognize the efforts of a frontline employee or, or a middle manager, well, you can just see how that boosts their sense of confidence mm -hmm. and confidence breeds confidence, which we need in organizations. Mm -hmm. But it also sets the example of my boss did that uh, to me. Should I be doing that for mm -hmm. my people? Mm -hmm. But there's also something else that, that we don't we overlook in a sense of about gratitude. And that's be grat be. Um, uh, grateful to yourself, mm. uh, express self gratitude, because you have something to give. Mm. And what you have to give may not be monetary, but you can give your time, you can give your respect, you can be generous mm. when it makes uh, sense to your workplace. How mm. can I help you out? I, I have this little uh, thing about looking at the workplace, which is community, but also creating a culture of service. How mm. can I help you do your job better? Mm. That doesn't mean I'm meddling, but how can I be of service to you? Mm. So. My next question is that, you know, while you were doing your research for your book, and you must have done a lot of the research during the COVID time, that was also a time which a lot of leaders say was the most difficult time for them to lead their, their flock and their organization. In your research, did you have any standout examples of leaders who demonstrated grace under pressure? And I'm not sure uh, if you can give any names, but just give me some stories. Well, yeah, I will tell you, I interviewed, as you know, I do a show called Grace Under Pressure. Um, it's a LinkedIn live program, and I'm, all your listeners are invited to it. Um, and I interviewed uh, Julia Borstein, who is a media, uh, uh, I'm sorry, she's with CNBC, which is a business channel in the yep. U.S. And she has a book called When Women Lead. And she did a extensive research into organizations, and she found that at the beginning of the pandemic, the leaders who did the best, uh, performed the best, were women leaders. Why? Because we were all thrown into this time of uncertainty, mm -hmm. and women leaders, unlike some of us men, are not afraid to ask for directions. <laughs> so, and they were, and and they didn't have the barrier to ask for help. I don't understand this. How can we work together? Mm -hmm. um, and so, I will say, in general, initially, women leaders did a terrific job of that, um, of, of bringing people together because they were willing acted with a sense of humility, showed vulnerability, but also the willingness to learn and guide the organization in the best way possible. So I, I'd have to say women leaders set the way. Um, and we saw that, you know, not just in the U.S., but I think globally as well. So. Thank you. Uh, the next question is that how does practicing grace in leadership contribute to a more inclusive and diverse environment at work? Good question. I think this the spirit of grace, as I said before, is the catalyst for the greater good. It's mm -hmm. about connectivity. It's inherent in that, is about looking as at people as people. And not different from us, but yes, we have uh, we come from different cultures, different races, ethnicities, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're all 
together. We're all human beings. Mm. So embracing diversity or the difference is looking at people as people, but also celebrating difference mm. in the sense of how can it make my organization stronger? So, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that when we we hear people talk about, well, I like to hire people just like me. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not really healthy <laughs> because okay. you end up like with mini me's or mm-hmm. whatever it is. How much better it is when you have people who think differently and act differently. Mm-hmm. Important to that is to have the same value system for the organization, but come from different experiences. And mm-hmm. that's the power of uh, diversity. But it's more important to to be um, inclusive, to look to bring people uh, who are different from ourselves. And it could, when I say different from ourselves, mm-hmm. in a male-dominated or organization, let's bring more women in. Okay. Why? Because we need to do that mm-hmm. because women are half the economy. But more importantly, right. it, it sh- research after research shows that w- boards, uh, excuse me, uh, public companies with boards who have more women on them actually do better <laughs> so it's, we need we need both of us together working together so yeah. i think it's looking for and grace teaches us to look for the the unity the connections between us the greater goodness the whole uh if you will mm. so. great response thank you the next question is that how can leaders use grace as a tool for conflict resolution and fostering a more collaborative work environment It's a great question. Again, grace is this, I think this thing is a facilitator for the greater good. So in a conflict situation, and leaders have to get involved in these things because they devolve, uh, otherwise the thing, the the organization will disrupt itself through rivalries or contention and conflict and uh, and productivity and morale Mm -hmm. uh, plummet. So again, by taking a kind of an open-hearted look at it, mm-hmm. you uh, bring people together in, you know, in conflict resolutions, meet with them individually and then together and form a, a solution. But acting with the spirit of grace means a little bit of give and take, because I want this, you want that. Neither of us are going to get exactly what we want uh, in this kind of service. So how can we uh, forge this together? And if there are, let's say, A and B choices and only one choice can be made, Mm -hmm. Uh, ensure that the person who has the B choice and not the A choice right. feels he or she can contribute in the future and say mm. to them, uh, our, uh, Ash, hey, um, I value your ideas. It wasn't right for our time together, mm. but you are still a valuable part of this team. And mm. I expect you to support your teammate mm. as I would expect that teammate to support you mm. when we go forward with your initiative. So a conflict then is grace is dealing with things in an open heartedness. And again, this gets back to a sense of community. Not none of us in a community are all going to think alike and do alike, mm-hmm. but we're going to be united by a greater whole. The, the we're, what what unites us is stronger than what divides us mm-hmm. because we believe we have shared values and we have a, a, a central uh, mission right. and we want to accomplish uh, joint goals. Mm-hmm. Well said, common goals. Uh, the other question that I had was on the subject of vulnerability. You know. Today, leaders are willing to be vulnerable. People from my vintage, vulnerability was seen as a weakness. My question is, how does embracing vulnerability play a role in being a leader with grace? I think vulnerability is a direct link to grace because grace is, um, uh, is, we like to say grace is a gift with no strings attached. And so when you need to be vulnerable or in circumstances, whatever, you are acting with an open heart. And, and um, I think one of the key points, parts of my book is we talked about taking care of yourself, excuse me, taking care of your people. Mm-hmm. You need to take care of yourself too. And so often leaders do a, a not so good job of that. Why? Because the nature of leadership is outward directed mm-hmm. there to, you know, to, point the way, but they have to take care of themselves uh, too. Mm -hmm. So um, as I talk about in the book about resilience and the ability to turn it off, 
Mm -hmm. Um, you're not always on, you have to have your shutdown, turn down times. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain your self-regulate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you can't always be, um, uh, going, going, going when you are, you wear down, you know, mm -hmm. the battery only has so much to yeah. it. You need to recharge yourself. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is that is the acknowledgement that I'm not superhuman. I right. might think I can do superhuman things mm -hmm. occasionally, yeah. but I need to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is critical to leadership. And it's hard for leaders to do mm -hmm. because they're pushed and pulled in many different directions. And, and here's the other thing about it. Mm -hmm. When when you talk to leaders about this, and I'm sure you see this in, in your coaching too, is that my organization needs me. Well, that's great. My organization can't do without me. Well, really? <laughs> you know, I hope they can do without you. Not that they, I want you to go away because you are doing a good job, but A, are you preparing them for the future? Two, are you building succession plans and, and mentoring people, coaching them, you know, job rotations, all the things we do to develop that next generation of leaders? Mm -hmm. But also, is your ego so strong that you think you are the one and only all the time? True. That's problematic. And that's where vulnerability comes in and saying, you know, it can't be about me all the time. Mm -hmm. I need to. I need to take care of myself and I I need to acknowledge my limitations. And when a leader is open about that, I think that gives a window mm -hmm. to others permission for them to say, you know, I need to take care of myself too. So uh, vulnerability then uh, maybe uh, the, the acknowledgement of it and practices for oneself um, spread throughout the organization. And when we talk about, you know, doing this, it that's not being selfish. Mm -hmm. It's actually a form of selflessness okay. because I'm doing this for the greater good mm -hmm. because I need to be my best and you, my employees, need me to be my best. Well said. So, so John, I have time for two more questions. <clears throat> my next question is that, how can the concept of grace under pressure be applied to leaders at all levels and not just top executives? Well, I think that's 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 a great question. If we go back to the the triptych I have, which is take care of your team, take care of yourself, and prepare for the future. So as a frontline or middle manager, what so take care of my team means. Be, taking care of your team in that perspective means be a good contributor, be a good teammate. You know, think of the work as an organization. Taking care of self is just what we talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure you rest, exercise, um, have your downtime. You know, practice resilience and preparing for the future means what do I need to do to adapt to the future? Mm -hmm. Do I need to continue my education? Do I need to adopt adapt? Um, I, I need to always adapt, but do I need to adopt new technical skills? Mm -hmm. um, do I need to learn new jobs? How can I be my best? by preparing myself for new challenges. And also to, you know, let your superiors know mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a good job. You know, one of my goals is to be in management and I would like the opportunity. So um, we talk about that. What would be my plans? Have a conversation. What do I need to do to be in management? Well said. And my last question to you, John, and this is for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation um, what is the one key takeaway that you hope readers will gain from Grace Under Pressure and apply to their own leadership styles? Uh, great question. I think the, uh, it's the understanding that it's not about you, it's mm. about us. And so if it's not about you, how do you create the us? Well, I think grace is that facilitator. Grace is that gift that enables you to be your best. How your best? Because you're focused on the needs of individuals, the, the team, the collective, the community, and you're focused on what ways you can make things better for the team and yourself in order to achieve the results your organization deserves. Mm, amazing. And on that note and your 
amazing single takeaway that everything is in an organization is not about you, but about us. Thank you, John, for talking to me about your book, Grace Under Pressure. I think I had never imagined that we could actually go through so many different aspects of grace. And it was amazing how you were able to relate different attributes of leadership, different elements of leadership back to grace. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck. Well, I want to say to you, the reason we were able to do that, Ash, is because you asked such great questions. You uh, you probed this topic and you were able to um, shine a light on the topic that made it easy for me. So I thank you and um, I appreciate uh, this opportunity to be on your show a second time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.